I thank the Lord for a retreat this time. Global retreat. I was still teaching and revealing God's own revelation about the all-sufficient Jesus. I pray that everyone, you and I, everyone here, everyone, everywhere, will find that Jesus is sufficient for each of our lives in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Father, we thank and bless your name. You're a good God, gracious God, a loving God. And we're asking, as we have sent Jesus from heaven to earth, to be a sufficiency, we pray that everyone that listens to the word at this time will find Jesus, Lord, Christ, Savior, a sufficiency in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord, for the answer. In Jesus' name, we pray. And before you sit down, everybody shout, Amen. Amen. Thank you, and God bless you. Already we have started looking at who Jesus is, our advocate, our bridegroom, our captain, the advocate of saints and sinners, the builder of the church, the sanctuary of the saints, and the captain of our salvation. Now we come to the next part of our looking into who Jesus is. And the topic this time is Jesus the divine, everlasting foundation and fountain. We're looking at 1 Corinthians chapter 3. And we're looking at verse 11. For all the foundation can no man lay than that is laid, and that which is laid already, which is Jesus Christ. Hear the word of God, inspired of the Spirit, releases the knowledge that this is the foundation. The foundation of our salvation, the foundation of our citizenship in the kingdom of God, the foundation of our faith, the foundation of everything gracious and good and godly in our lives. He is the foundation, divine and everlasting. Not only that, it's the fountain that God has given, the fountain that brings us cleansing. In Zechariah chapter 13, reading from verse 1, it says, In that day, there shall be a fountain opened for the house of David and to the inhabitants of Jerusalem for sin and for uncleanness. That is the fountain that God himself has approved and has said, has appointed that he will be the one by his blood by sacrifice, by a substitution that will be for the cleansing from all sin and all uncleanness. So we're bringing everything together. He is the divine, everlasting foundation and fountain. We're looking at three things in the message. Number one, for D. Number two for E. Number three for F. We're seeing A, B, and C. Now we look at D, E, and F. D, Jesus, the door of the sheep into sufficiency. is the door, the appointed door. There's no other door by which we can enter into the presence of 
of God. There's no other door into which, through which, we can enter into the provision of heaven, into the covenant of God, and into relationship with the Lord. Jesus is the door, the door of the sheep into sufficiency. He, that's number two, Jesus, the exalted servant, a savior, for God has highly exalted him. That at his name, at the mention of his name, every knee shall bow under the earth, on earth, and in heaven. Jesus, the exalted servant, our savior. F number three, Jesus, the friend of the sick and the suffering. Jesus, the friend, the one who comes near to hell. The one who is closer than a brother, than a relative, and the one who is mightier than any helper here on earth. Jesus, the friend of the sick and the sovereign. One by one, let's look at number one. D, Jesus, the door of the sheep into sufficiency. In John chapter 10, reading from verse 7, then said Jesus unto them, verily, verily, assuredly, assuredly, without any shadow of doubt, I say unto you, I am the door of the sheep. If the door by which you enter in, you knock at that door. And the door is open to everyone. In verse 8, it tells us, All that ever came before me are thieves and robbers. But the sheep did not hear them. Look at verse 9. In verse 9, I am the door. It says that again. Repetition makes for emphasis. I am the door. Not that I was. Not that I might be in the future. Now, at the present time. Every day, at the present time, I am the door. By me, if any man enter in, it's through him we enter into the presence of God. Without him, no man, no woman, no person on earth can enter into the presence of God. Why? God is holy. Everlastingly holy. Perpetually holy. And he's so holy that sinful man cannot get into his presence. Any sinful man trying to get to the presence of God, the Holy One, is immediately condemned and taken away to the other side. But Jesus becomes the door. Is between sinful man and the Holy God. And as we come, and he says, what are you looking for? I want to get to the presence of the heavenly father, the God of heaven. It's through this Christ, Jesus, the door. That way in time. That's why he says, I am the door. By me, if any man enter in, he shall be saved. He shall be saved. The only way to be saved is to enter through this door and he shall go in and out and find pasture. It tells us in verse 10. In verse 10 it says, The theme cometh not but for to steal, to kill, and to destroy. I am come that they might find life, have life, and that they might have that life more abundantly. Jesus, the door. Three things we're looking at about Jesus here. Number one, the door into abundant life and full salvation. Number two, the deliverer of his people. Number three, the desire of all nations. Look at number one, the door 
into abundant life and full salvation. The door into abundant life and salvation. Look at that again. John chapter 10 verse 9. I am the door. He introduces himself to you. I am the door. You want peace with God? I am the door. You want the fulfillment of the promises of God from the beginning to the very end? I am the door. You want abundance? You want blessings? And you want conversion? And you want entrance into the delivering power of the Lord? I am the Lord. You want fellowship with God? I am the door. And you want the grace of God to flow into your life and take over your life he says there's no other way i am the door by me if any man enter in he shall be saved and shall go in and out and find pasture the latter part of verse 10 it says in verse 10 the latter part it says i am come that they might have life today you have life abundant life eternal life, sufficient life, and satisfactory life, heavenly life. That they might have life, and that they might have it more abundantly. It tells us in Acts chapter 14, verse 27. Acts 14, 27. And when they were come, and had gathered the church together, they rehearse all that God had done with them and how and how he had opened the door. He had opened the door of faith unto the Gentiles. The same door that leads the Jew into the presence of God. That same door leads the Gentile to the presence of God. And they glorify God and rejoice in God. How God himself has opened the door of faith. To be saved, you need faith. To be healed, you need faith. To be sanctified, you need faith. To be made holy, you need faith. To get to heaven, you need faith. And to please God, you need faith. Without faith, it's impossible to please him. And that faith, the all-sufficient thing, uh, that if you have that faith, all things are possible for you. Christ is uh, the door of faith to everything uh, God has provided. Look at the second thing there. The second thing there is the deliverer of his people. The deliverer of his people is from the time of the Garden of Eden. From the time of Adam and Eve, we came into bondage. Adam and Eve actually sold all their descendants to the authority of Satan, Lucifer, the old serpent, the devil. And everybody has been struggling since then to be free and the only one that has come effectually, effectively, to deliver us from what Adam and Eve transmitted unto us is this Jesus Christ is the deliverer of his people. Look at Romans chapter 11, reading from verse 26. Romans 11, verse 26. And so all Israel shall be saved as it is written, there shall come out of Zion the deliverer, capital D. There is not the normal, average, human, run-of-the-mill, ordinary deliverer. The people running about proclaiming themselves, I deliver, I deliver. No, they cannot. The one who delivers from sin. And from all the consequences of sin, the one who delivers and gives acceptable deliverance, deliverance acceptable to God, deliverance that actually sets us free, his name is Jesus. He says, the deliverer, 
and he shall turn away ungodliness from Jacob. It turns us away from ungodliness. It turns us away from all the consequences and the condemnation of ungodliness. He is the deliverer. Look at verse 27. In verse 27, for this is my covenant unto them. When I shall take away their sins, you understand? The deliverance is talking about starts from taking away their sin. And when he takes away their sin, all the consequences of sin, all the curse that came as a result of sin, everything is taken away. Everything that Adam and Eve by the fall had brought upon the world, upon the people of the world, everything is taken away because he is the deliverer of the people. Hebrews chapter 2. We're reading from verse 14. Hebrews chapter 2, reading from verse 14, it tells us, for as much then as the children are partakers of flesh and blood, he also, referring to Christ, he also himself likewise took part of the same that through death, the death at Calvary, through death, the death at the cross, through death, the death through crucifixion, he might destroy him that had the power of death. That is the devil. He knocked off his hand from our lives. It knocked off his plan, power, and purpose from our lives. And now we are free. I am free. The chain is broken. And if I see, if I believe, if I accept that Jesus is my deliverer, all those shackles and chains of the devil, they are broken from your life. Look at verse 15. In verse 15, and deliver them, that's the deliverer, and deliver them who through fear of death were all their lifetime subject unto bondage. What makes us man to be subject unto bondage? Fear. The fear of death. Sometimes the fear comes from within because we are human beings. We see a lot in life. We hear a lot in life. We read a lot of what is happening and so the fear of death and when you have the fear it brings us into bondage. How do people have fear? They see that man and he's not smiling at them and the man is giving the impression he has the power to ruin us, to destroy us, to kill every good thing in our lives. The life that has purpose, that has power, that has progress. Somebody comes and he shows himself he has the power to destroy, to kill total life, radiant life from us. It brings fear and the fear Brings you to bondage to that man. Uh, there's a woman that says, I'll tell everything you've done. I have your secret. Like Delilah had the secret of something. Your secret's in my hand. I wasn't befriending you in vain. I was befriending you until I got all your secret. Now that I have your secret, I can use you. Everything you told me to destroy you. And because of that, the fear that that woman might bring out all the secrets of your life and literally kill you, destroy you, hand over, hand you over to the Philistines. You have a fear, and the fear you have brings you into bondage. Or it's just the fear of spirits. 
You see them in the bush. You see them in the sky. You see them everywhere. You see them in the cockroach. You see them in the black patch. You see them everywhere. And the fear of those so-called spirits bring you into bondage. I came to announce to you that yokes of bondage are broken in your life today. Because it says it's come to deliver them who through fear of death were all their lifetime subject to bondage. All their lifetime. Can you think of this? That all your lifetime, every day, fear rules you. You want to start a good thing? Fear rules you. Can you think about this? That you're in bondage to those thoughts, to those personalities, to those people, and to those uh, demons. You're in bondage to them every day. What happens? That at the point of death all through their life, at the time you come to the end of your days, end of time, at that end, you're still in fear and bondage. Where will you spend eternity? That's why Christ has come as the deliverer from fear and from bondage. Congratulations, today you're free. I am free. The Lord confirm it in your life in Jesus' name. Number three here is the desire of all nations. The desire of all nations. How long have we been desiring that every kind of yoke were broken in our lives? How long have we desired that every pressure, every pain, and everything negative to progress in life will be taken away from us. We have desired so long and now that desire is fulfilled. Your desires are fulfilled. In Christ, he is the desire of all nations, the desire of every sinner, Every saint, every good thing you desire, actually Christ is the one that brings the fulfillment of that desire. And so whatever the desire is, every good thing you want, every spiritual height you want to reach, and every goal you have, everything you say, that's the peak and I'm getting there. The one who can help fulfill that desire is Jesus, the desire of all nations. Hey, guy, chapter 2, reading from verse 7. And I will shake all nations, and the desire of all nations shall come. There's a time of shaking. As you look at the situation in the world now, the shaking going on. As you read and hear the news, the shaking going on. I will shake all nations until their hearts begin to shake. Until their lives begin to shake. And the Lord is going to shake everything shakeable on earth. But then he says that will not be the end of the history of man. When he begins to shake all nations, it says the desire of nations shall come. And then it says, and I will fill this house with glory, says the Lord of hosts. And he hear your amen there. When Christ, the desire of all nations, when Christ, the desire of every person, saint or sinner, when he comes, he can come to your heart today, can come to your life today, and then he says, the house, the temple, your house, your household, your temple, Everything will be filled 
of the glory of God. Amen. You can do it for a nation. You can do it for the whole world. And can do it for every individual. Depends on how ready you are. That you know he is the door. He is the deliverer. He is the desire of all nations. And then you invite him to your life. And every good thing you have ever desired, and you concentrate on that, you're not looking here and there, you're not shortchanged, you're not sidetracked, you're looking for the fulfillment of every good desire in your life. At the, mo the moment you say, welcome Lord, welcome Savior, welcome, and you enter through that door. From today, desires in your life will begin to be fulfilled begin to unfold and your life will take a brilliant bright shining light in Jesus name we're coming to number two now number two is Jesus the exalted servant our savior Jesus the exalted servant our Savior in Philippians chapter 2, reading from verse 5, let this mind be in you. The different kinds of minds. And the mind you have gives you a mindset. And your mindset determines the direction you go in life, the destiny you get to after life. There is the mind of the evil one, of Satan. And if you have that mind in you, the direction of your life is determined by the kind of mind you have. There is the mind of humanity. And the mind gives them a mindset. And if you have the mind of powerless, poor humanity, you're going to go their direction. And that direction determines your destiny. If you have the mind of Christ, the attitude of Christ, the aptitude of Christ, and the ultimate altitude in Christ. If you have the mind of Christ, it determines your mindset in life. It determines your goal. Determines the go-getting ability you have. Determines the positive attitude you have in life. And it determines the victorious life that you live. Let this mind be in you. Which was also in Christ Jesus. Look at verse 6. Who being in the form of God. Thought it not to be a robbery. To be equal with God, verse 7, in verse 7, but he made himself of no reputation, and he took upon him the form of his servant, and, be, and was made in the likeness of men. In verse 8, it says, and being found in fashion as a man, the son of man. He humbled himself and became obedient unto death, even to the death of the cross. Look at verse 9 now. It says, because of that wherefore God has also highly exalted him, his exalted servant. He made himself servant. The Lord made him supreme. Exalted servant as Savior. It says, wherefore God also has highly exalted him and given him a name which is above every name. In verse 10, that at the name of Jesus, every knee should bow. Your knee will bow. Your knee will bow voluntarily. You say, I bow to him. I bend to him. 
I submit to him. I surrender to him voluntarily. But all the others who do not submit, surrender voluntarily, they will surrender, submit compulsorily. At the end of time, it will be too late to repent at that time. Because all at the mention of the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow. Of things in heaven and things on earth and things under the earth. Verse 11, in verse 11 it says... And that every tongue of the believer voluntarily, of those who die as some believers, as sinners, as rebels against God, involuntarily, compulsorily, that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Jesus Exalted servant, our Savior. Three things we're looking at. Number one, Emmanuel, God with us. Number two, the express image of the Father. Number three, the elect of God. Look at number one there. Number one, he is Emmanuel, God with us. Matthew chapter one. Reading from verse 21. In verse 21, and she shall bring forth a son. And thou shalt call his name, call that name, Jesus, for he shall save his people from their sins. Verse 22. In verse 22, now all this was done that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken by, which was spoken of the Lord by the prophet, saying, look at verse 23, behold, a virgin, not a woman, a virgin shall be a child and shall bring forth a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel which being interpreted is God with us. The moment, you receive, the moment you receive Jesus, you're receiving Emmanuel, you're receiving him, and God dwells with you. He'll be on your side. He'll be by your side. He'll be in front of you. He'll be following you from behind. It will be the shield in the day for you. I will be the power in your heart to do what you could not do naturally. God with us. Look at number two. Number two, we're looking at the express image of the Father. The express image of the Father. The express representation of the Father. Hebrews chapter 1. Reading from verse 3, it says, And being the brightness of his glory and the express image of his person. That's what we have. Many people don't understand when it says they receive Jesus as their Savior and Lord. That Jesus abides in them. And they don't think they are any different. Yes, you are different. When you receive Jesus, you receive Emmanuel, God with us. God in us. God before us. God around us. And God sustaining us from beneath. And then you also receive the express image of the Father. And it says, it's the express image of his person upholding all things by the word of his power and by the power of his word. When he had by him, by himself, judged 
purged our sins and sat down on the right hand of majesty on high. Sat down. Sat down. Why did he sit down? Because he had finished everything he came to do. And he's no more trying to do anything. He said, it is finished. And all the blessings of heaven are now available for you. Everything you desire today, now available for you. And now, he sits down at the right hand of majesty on high. Say good amen for yourself. Yeah. We're coming to number three here. Number three is the elect of God. The elect of God in First Peter chapter 2, reading here from verse 6. First Peter chapter 2. We're reading from verse 6. It says, Wherefore also. It is contained in the scripture. Behold, I lay in Zion a chief cornerstone. Look at the next word. Elect. Appointed. Approved of God. Elect. Because this Jesus is the one that God, he looked at all of heaven. All those angels. From the greatest of them to the least of them, none could be elected to be a savior, a substitute, the acceptable sacrifice, and to be the sufficiency for every need of man. And he stood out distinct, different, and the Lord elected him as the one that will come and solve all the unsolvable issues in your life. Amen. Yeah. Elect precious and he that believeth on him shall not be confounded. I believe in him. I believe in him. Let everyone hear you. I believe in him. You will not be confounded. You will not be ashamed. You will not be judged anymore. There will be no confusion in your life anymore. Your life becomes stable. Step first. Solidified, and the goodness of the Lord will be following after you every day. The goodness of the Lord will be following after me every day. Say it for yourself. is the elect of God. And now he makes us to be the chosen, set apart, elect of God as well. We're coming to point number three. In point number three, we've looked at D is the door. We looked at E is the exalted one as Savior. We're not looking at F, Jesus, the friend of the sick and the suffering. He'll be your friend. When you have any need, you're sick, he'll come by your side. He'll touch you and heal you in Jesus' name. What do you think of the richest man in your country being your friend, faithful friend? What do you think of the greatest physician, doctor in your country being your friend? What do you think? of the greatest protector, bodyguard in your nation, be your friend. And Jesus is more than them all. And this Jesus, your friend, he will see you through life. Today, he'll see you through. Tomorrow, he'll see you through. 
When you're sick, he'll get you up of that sick bed. When you suffer, he'll come, he'll take the suffering away. Jesus, the friend of the sick and suffering. We're well, dividing this to three parts. Number one, the foundation of God's building. Number two, the forerunner of all believers. Number three, the faithful and true witness. That's your friend. Look at number one. Number one, the foundation of God's building. It tells us in 1 Corinthians chapter 3, reading from verse 9. 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 9. For we are laborers together with God. And ye are God's husbandry. Ye are God's building. Ye are God's building. Look at verse 10. It says in verse 10, according to the grace of God, which is given unto me. You know, it's beautiful, wonderful. When you carry the notion, when you carry the belief, when you carry the authority of heaven, and everywhere you go, you say, according to the grace of God, which is given unto me. Grace given unto me. Saving grace given unto me. Sanctifying grace Giving unto me sufficient grace, giving unto me sustaining faith, grace, giving unto me according to that grace of God, which is given unto me as a wise master builder. I have laid the foundation, and another buildeth thereon. But let every man take heed. How he buildeth thereon. When you say, let every man take heed, what does that mean? Let every preacher take heed how he buildeth thereon. Let every evangelist take heed how he buildeth thereon. Let every teacher, such a scripture teacher, such a school teacher, take heed how he buildeth Thereon, let every apostle take heed how he buildeth. Thereon, let every bishop take heed how he buildeth. Thereon, let every prophet take heed how he buildeth. Thereupon, look at verse 11. In verse 11, for other foundation can no man lay than that is slave. That's already laid, which is Jesus Christ. Jesus, that foundation. And as we live our lives standing firmly on that foundation, we will sustain our lives until we see him face to face in heaven in Jesus' name. Look at 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 19. 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 19. Nevertheless, the foundation of God standeth sure, unshakable, irreversible. You cannot edit it, modify it, or change it. The foundation. Of God stand as sure. There's no man, there's no preacher, no evangelist, no so called apostle can come in our present day and touch that foundation. No preacher, no pastor, no so called powerful man can come today and Rubbish that foundation and place another foundation there. He'll be lost forever and ever. He'll be lost on the other side, the lake of fire forever. Nevertheless, 
the foundation of God stand sure. Having the seal, the Lord knoweth them that are his. And let everyone that nameth the name of Christ depart from iniquity. Amen. What gives assurance? That you are built on this eternal, immovable foundation is that you depart from iniquity. If you abide in iniquity, if you remain in iniquity, if you rejoice in iniquity, and you are boasting yourself to be in the foundation, you'll be disappointed irrevocably in eternity, you regret in eternity, but you depart from iniquity, every form, every shade of iniquity. And now you rely on Christ, the foundation. He'll build you up. He will strengthen you. And forever and ever, if you die standing on that foundation, relying on that foundation in eternity, you'll be with him in Jesus' name. We're looking at number two here. Number two, he is the forerunner of all believers. The forerunner of all believers. Who is the forerunner? The one that runs before you. He's run the race. He's completed the race. He's got the victory. And he becomes the conqueror. And you're always looking at him. He's the forerunner of your faith as a believer. Hebrews chapter 6. Verse 19, which hope we have as an anchor to the soul, both sure and steadfast, and which enters into that within the veil, the hope we have, sure and steadfast, hope in him, hope in the Savior, hope in a sustainer, hope in the one that is in heaven, praying, supplicating, interceding for us, Christ in you, the hope of glory, verse 20. In verse 20, it says, whither the forerunner is for us entered, even Jesus. The forerunner, even Jesus, made an high priest forever and after the order of Melchizedek. Forever, he is a high priest. Forever, he is the builder of the church. Forever, he is the forerunner of our faith. He will never leave you. He will never forsake you. When you think everything is down, you discover him is with you. He'll make everything come up in Jesus' name. He's for you. He is for you. He is for you. No matter what challenge you have, no matter what people think about you and what you think of yourself, he is for you. He'll never leave you. He'll never forsake you. You'll find him day after day. The forerunner of you as a believer. In the foundation, the forerunner, look at number three here. He is the faithful and true witness. The faithful and a true witness. Revelation chapter 3. In Revelation chapter 3, reading from verse 14. Revelation chapter 3, verse 14. 
and unto the angel, the minister, the leader of the church of the Laodicean tribe. These things says the Amen, the faithful, and a true witness. The faithful and a true witness. Every promise he has made is faithful. He will fulfill in your life. Every good thing he spoke concerning you is faithful. He will fulfill it in your life. Every provision he has made for you he will, is faithful. He will fulfill it in your life in Jesus' name. This day and every day, you'll find him faithful. His provision will not lack in your life. His promises will not fail in your life. His power will not fail in your life. He is the faithful and the true witness. And as you rely on him today, he'll bring that nature of faithfulness also into your life. Into my life. Into your life. Revelation chapter 17, reading from verse 14. Revelation chapter 17, reading from verse 14. These shall make war with the Lamb. We're not looking at the war, we're looking at the Lamb. These, all those on the side of the Antichrist, all those on the side of ideologies contrary to Christ, they'll make war with the Lamb. We don't look at the war, we look at the Lamb. And the Lamb shall overcome them in your life, in your family, your local church, your denomination. In a church, in the whole country at large, the Lamb shall overcome them. For he is Lord of lords and King of kings, and they that are with him are called. Thank God I am called. And chosen, thank God I am chosen and faithful. Thank God we'll be faithful. He brings his faithfulness into our lives. And he makes us faithful to the world. Faithful in his way. As we walk in the way of life, in the way of righteousness, we're faithful to him. He makes us faithful to his will. He reveals his will unto us. And we have committed ourselves unto him. We'll be faithful to his word. We'll be faithful in his way. We'll be faithful to the revelation of his will. And I pray more grace for you. More life in you. More divine ability in you. That he as he who has called you is faithful. He'll make you faithful all the way through. Amen. amen. Right so there's an amen in your life. Right so the faithfulness of God will work in your life. Open your mouth and pray. Everything we have heard of Christ, the door. Christ, the exalted one. Christ, our friend and forerunner. And the Lord will fulfill his word, his way, his will in your life.